Each fall, a sort of frenzy hits Idaho when the huge ocean-going trout called steelhead begin their run back to the rivers and streams of Idaho where they were spawned. So come along on a steelhead fishing adventure. Heller's Bar at the peak of steelhead season, as busy as the mall the day before Christmas. Even on a weekday, the ramp is a traffic quagmire. Boats in all shapes and sizes are lined up, waiting their turn to launch. While those lucky ones who had the good sense to arrive early roar by, already on the chase. The dull gray autumn day threatens rain, but it's perfect weather for steelhead fishing. Tackle boxes, coolers of food, and extra clothing are being stacked on board those boats already hugging the shoreline. And then it's off into the mighty waters of the Snake River. The fearless captain of the good ship is Ed Schriever, a renowned steelhead hunter reputed to be one of the best on the river. He shows no emotion at the helm, but it's said he's relentless in his pursuit of the elusive ocean-going rainbow. We're going to go up the Salmon River and fish the lower 15 miles, I think. We'll try to find a fish in there. The first jet boats were designed and built in the Lewiston area, launching a multi-million dollar boat building business that's become essential to the local economy. The idea for the jet boat was partially spawned by the steelhead craze. Anglers were searching for a way to travel upstream to fish for the big ones in the turbulent waters of the Snake and Salmon Rivers. Put your life jackets on. A powerful engine was mounted on uniquely designed, sleek aluminum boats, and an industry was born. These days, jet boats are a common sight on the Snake and Salmon Rivers during steelhead season. Yeah, the, uh, the snake can be fairly routine, but there's nothing routine about the next four miles of the lower Salmon River. It's rocky and not for novices, and we just like to take the precaution of being ready. Jeff Bouncil and his father-in-law, Randy Gray, have traveled all the way from California for a chance at an Idaho steelhead. These two out-of-state anglers are old friends of Ed's, but they represent a flourishing recreation and tourism business centered on steelhead fishing. Steelhead is it around here from late September till February. It is fishing. It defines fishing. There's no doubt these anglers added to the local economy when they stock their tackle box. It opens like a treasure chest, revealing a colorful array of bright, shiny lures that, in theory, are irresistible to steelhead. We're going to drift fish, and we've got a piece of pencil lead about two feet above a colored float, actually. It's just, they call it a corky. comes in a variety of shapes and sizes and colors, and it basically floats up just off of the bottom and presents the color and the shape and the, the little ball of yarn and the bait in front of the fish. The bait is a little shrimp. Ed says the feel is different than trout fishing. Steelhead usually have a very gentle bite, so the angler has to be on top of his game to set the hook. Uh, sweet spot out here. When we drift fishing like this, we're looking for places where fish are holding. Uh, typically the tail out, the, the slow velocity part. Three anglers casting from one boat requires a bit of finesse to avoid entanglements. But it doesn't bother these guys, because after all, they're old friends, and they're all out here for the same reason. Solitude, I guess. Certainly not the company. Oh, lift your lines. Lift your lines. The fearless captain and gracious host is the first to feel that telltale tug. Fish on. No, it shook me. But it doesn't Dang, shake the captain. Right in no off. time at all, he's hooked into something else. Somebody's lying! I got somebody's lying! <laughs> Boy, that felt good, though. It's like the Three Stooges fishing. <laughs> the next to get hit is Jeff. Oh, that's he right. reels in an empty hook. The bait's been stolen. <laughs> no one's about to call fish on until they see it jump. Yeah, no bait, no nothing. This is solitude, methodically casting, drifting and reeling, waiting for the next bite. 
Randy's the first to catch a fish and actually bring it within sight of the boat. It's jumping, so it seems pretty safe to assume it's a legitimate fish on. Now what do you do? Well, we get it to the boat and I get somebody with a net over here. Head first now, and if you can swing him. It's a nice, colorful fish with a bold red stripe along its side. The adipose fin has been clipped, indicating it was raised in one of Idaho's four steelhead hatcheries. And uh, under the harvest program, those are the only fish you can keep. Randy has opted to keep it only long enough for a photograph. There you go. One, two, three. Thank you. Beautiful. It's a nice fish. Move the net. Okay, we're going to catch him again. Steelhead fishing is it around here, and it appeals to all. Uh, because it's a challenge and because it's fun. I like, I like to take people steelhead fishing and watch them catch their first steelhead. It is a charge. Big one. Big fish. She's all right. She's all right. The last person to hook a fish is incredible Idaho producer Sue Ness. And yep, it's her first steelhead. Big fish, big fish, Sue. Hang on. It's the largest fish of the day. A big, beautiful male. You're keeping it? <laughs> it yeah, it's hatchery food. Yeah, we're keeping it. <laughs> That's going to make a nice barbecue. <laughs>